For section three, we're gonna do a little bit of a grab bag, okay? Every class doesn't have to be the same. I'm gonna give you four things that you can do in this last unit, and it's up to you to choose which ones you wanna do. Maybe you do two sometimes. Maybe you do one sometimes. Maybe you've got a really advanced class, all the CAP members come and you, you get all four. In. Like, it doesn't matter. Um, but I would choose quality over quantity here. The first thing we'll look at is an interesting possibility, which is I'm here and I have, I got my cross space. Well, there's a way to make this cross space way stronger, okay? What I can do is I can take this left hand, I can, this is called the shoulder of justice choke. I'm gonna put two fingers, just like Spider-Man shoots his web shooters, I'm gonna put two fingers right in here in the armpit. And now from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift my shoulder down. I want my shoulder to hit the chest like this. And it moves in a circle to my wrist like so. And it's a strong choke, okay? It'll come on pretty quick, all right? One thing is that's important is I don't want tension in my arm. My left arm is very loose, which allows it to open. I need the elbow joint to open so that I'm sucking in that carotid artery. And now I don't, I don't squeeze my left arm at all. I just bring my shoulder in and it's very strong. If I squeeze the whole time, which is the main mistake, is people come down here and they go, and there's nothing. You feel that? There's just no, nothing's happening because I'm all tense and tight and I'm pushed and people go, ah, nothing's happening, coach. You're turning your arm into a tourniquet. So my elbow socket opens very loose. And as I come back down, I get a very strong choke. Now, the reaction you're gonna get if you wanna build this into a dilemma is, as I start to choke, he's gonna bridge to alleviate the choke. Step over to the mount. And you can do that in various ways, but like, when he bridges, he can't properly stop the mount, or you could knee on belly there too, but like, it's very hard for him to bridge and relieve the pressure and block at the same time. Well, then he might manage it, but that's a pretty good, uh, Another thing you can do is you can, you can start with a hand if you really want to make this a complete system. So you can put my hand here earlier. So even when he goes to bridge, you can't lock out, even like try to bring your left knee up. See how you can't bring it up into the space that you wanted to bring it up into? Whereas if I was here, when he bridges, you could bring that up and block. But if I know what I want to do, I can put this here. I start going for my choke. When he goes to alleviate the choke, it's not possible for him to stop that leg from coming over, okay? So that's one thing you can put in there is a shoulder of justice dilemma. It's pretty strong. Another thing you could explore is, how do you turn this way? Is a common reaction. When I look for the Americanas, he straightens his arm. When I look for the Kimura, he straightens his arm. But in both cases, as he straightened, I still have a hand on the wrist, okay? So what I can do is, let's say he straightens out. From here, my grip can change to the top of the wrist, like so. I'm gonna slide up and put my elbow under the elbow. I wanna find that elbow right in the middle of my elbow socket. And now from here, I have the straight arm lock, all right? Keys to the straight arm lock is, if my elbow goes above his elbow, nothing. My elbow goes below his elbow. A little better, but nothing, right? I really want to put that elbow socket right in my own elbow socket. I create a pinch there so that there's no ability for his elbow to rotate or a limited ability for his elbow to rotate. And here, I have a, a decent pinch so that when he's rotating his hand, it doesn't move as much as like, if I were up here, there's like a full rotation that's very easy, right? I'm here controlling rotation. I'm up here also, like this grip, not super important, okay? I'm here controlling rotation and I'm clamping hard here so that when he wants to rotate his arm, it's hard. This is coming down and a little bit I'm raising up on the elbow at the same time. There's a little bit of this happening too. So just here, that's my finish, okay? The mistake here is like if I have a C clamp and I'm trying to control that rotation, just rotate your thumb here. It's really hard for me, it's very easy for him to come out. I'm instead pressing his, the, the upper knuckle or like the upper joint of his wrist tight into my palm like that. 
He wants to rotate. It's very, very hard. And then it's not any different. I'm just using different hands. If I was coming down the Kimura and he comes up, I take a clamp and I'm here. It's just, just reversed hand position, but the same basic technique. You know, when he wants to rotate here, it's hard because I've caged the, the, the points of rotation are here and here, and I need to cage those points of rotation so that they're so limited that I can produce a significant break, all right? So you could do in round three, looking at the trilemma of attacking that arm. He, he goes Americana, he, he straightens out, you attack with the straight arm lock. He comes down, you go to the Kimura. He comes up, you go to the arm lock. He comes up, you go to the Americana. And like, you could just cycle drilling back, just switching between all of those. That could make for a really great third section. Another idea we had. Neon belly arm bar. Neon belly arm bar and floating knee, to floating knee to mount. Let's look at the neon belly arm bar and a little bit deeper dive on the neon belly if that seems to be like, hey, students are really interested in increased neon belly. I'm here and I want to get to knee on belly. Another transition is to come out and put two hands on the arm, come all the way up to like a tripod position. I put my leg across, I'm in my knee on belly. Everything we talked about for knee on belly still is relevant. Hand on this shoulder, and I like to put my hand on this elbow here. What is good about knee on belly is I 100% I could just lead in on strikes, elbows, punches, things like that. Where neon belly is superior to mount and it has its own unique niche, is someone really, really big and strong. If I go to mount on someone really, really, really big and strong, when they start bucking and pushing and everything, like, it can be extremely difficult to resist that. And I'll, I'm very likely to end up on my back. You get like a 400 pound man who's like super strong and like he's bucking and kicking and pushing and like, your jiu-jitsu is going to be put to the test. And yeah, maybe you'll ride it great, but one of the advantages of this position is if he pushes really hard, I just stand up and I'm still in a very dangerous position if we're just fighting, right? Like I can be kicking and hitting him, but if I just want to do jiu-jitsu, like when he pushes up super hard, I come up and I come right back down and he pushes again. And I come up and I go right back down, go ahead. And you feel like your push just gets naturally weaker, like he's bench pressing me. And like your bench press doesn't get stronger every time you do it, it gets weaker. He's going, and, and people will go till failure on that. But I, this is a great thing to teach people from like self-defense. Like he pushes, boom, pushes. I might even grab something and bring myself right back down. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly difficult for this person. It'll make the bottom, it's the bottom person get a CrossFit workout here, really. And it's, it's hard work. Now, if you want to finish it off this push, when he makes this push, what I'm going to do is, I've still got this hand up here, I'm going to come take this grip here or here, everything's okay initially, okay? Because we're assuming, like, yes, I could come in and, like, steal a whole grip like this even better, all right? But for our purposes and just foundations, I'm going to come up and put my foot in his armpit like that, okay? And here. You can take your hand from the shoulder to the ground for support. It'll make things a lot easier. My head rotates away. I gotta keep this arm, whatever grip I have. If I have this grip, it's great. If I have this grip, if I have a sleeve grip, all these things are great, but I gotta keep this arm as I take my head out in this direction to bring the, the second leg over, okay? Now I'm here and I'm gonna come down and straighten the arm as much as possible. From here, I go in with the, the hip finish, okay? You can come across if you like that. Nothing wrong with that, just losing a step. There are, you know, at a higher level, there are some defensive tactics you might engage in. And, and we, you could always look at those rotation of the wrist finishes to stop stuff like that. But overall, um, this is a pretty good technique from here, a good, first technique of like finishing from the neon belly is when he goes to push, just kind of in real time. I'm here coming up, coming down. Looks cool, feels cool. Um, so that'd be something you could take, you could put in the third round. What was the last one for a grip? 
floating mean. So, sorry, let me bring you out this way. I'm here, okay, and I decide to jam that knee across like we were talking about earlier. So I brought this in. And we talked about going all the way up to a knee on belly, that's one option. Another option that I, I like a lot is from here. My hands are gonna be fairly loose, but I can take my knee off the mat and bring it back to like his hip. When he goes to bridge me from here, it's super hard. The weight is, is on his hip. And I'm gonna make a rotation like this. And that's how I get to the mount top. All right, let's switch your legs that way. So you can see, maybe it'd be better We'll rotate maybe a little bit here. So, yeah. Again, you, you can actually have your hands up. I mean, there's a lot of possible hand positions for this one. But in here, I wedge this in. And then what I'm going to do is, because that bridge is a problem, all that knees on the ground, I bring it back. And I can call it floating knees. My knee is floating off the ground. Okay? When he goes to bridge me, it's so hard. You just can't do it. All right? The last part though, like, and I don't want to put my knee on the ground. When my knee goes on the ground, it's really easy for him to break. That's why I focus on the floating knee aspect of this. Let's turn our legs this way. From my floating knee, what I'm going to do is my right foot is going to rotate like a windshield wiper, like that. My second foot is, is my heel is back heeling into his hip. There's a squeeze here. Even if you were trying to bridge me from here, not going to really. I'm not connected to his hips. I'm coming back. I have a mount. I already have an underhook, but that's what I like to play from the mount. So that's like a floating knee. You could include that in your third round. But the idea is that the third round, and I'd like to make more foundations videos this way, is a little more elective what you can do there. So when people come, it's not the same old, same old class, okay?